Hello and good day, everyone. My name is Darlena Birch, MBA, RDN, and most importantly, public health dietitian. Welcome to my YouTube channel, where I discuss federal nutrition programs, the important role they play in ensuring the health and well-being of all Americans, and how public health dietitians work tirelessly to support these amazing programs. All views expressed on this channel are my own and do not represent the opinions of any entity whatsoever with which I have been, am now, or will be affiliated. In today's video, I'm going to focus on WIC Supplemental Foods, aka the WIC Food Package. The WIC Food Package is tailored to the nutritional needs of the participant and it provides the specific target nutrition most important to the participant's life stage. This means that the food package received by a pregnant woman, postpartum woman, breastfeeding woman, breastfed infant, formula-fed infant, or young child will all be different. You may be wondering why I focus so heavily on WIC. If you've been watching my videos, then you know that my entire career has been dedicated to this program. But what I haven't mentioned is why I'm so passionate about this community in particular. When I was 16 years old, I set two life goals for myself, one of them being that I would major in nutrition. By the time I was in college and taking my nutrition coursework, I knew that clinical dietetics, which is where most dietitians end up working, really wasn't going to be for me. Food service management also didn't really draw me in, nor did corporate dietetics or research. The reason why public health nutrition drew me in was because it would allow me to work with populations that needed nutrition support, but didn't always have the financial means to access that support. I liked the idea of helping those in need, advocating for a population that I felt had just as much right to nutrition support as any other individual in society. My first job was working as a local agency WIC director for a rural clinic in a small town located in Arizona. Also, a special shout out to all of my Greenlee County residents. Now, the entire population of this county was 8,600 people, and to this day, it's the smallest town I've ever lived in, and it was a very eye-opening experience for me, and I'm very glad I did it, and if I could do it all over again, I absolutely would. I think that there's a lot to be learned from just getting that rural experience. A lot of us in America clearly live in these large, urban, suburban populations, but I think once you go to rural America and really live their life and understand the challenges that they're facing that are so much different from what you might face in a city or a suburban neighborhood, it's very eye-opening. So I highly encourage anyone who has the opportunity to do so to spend some time living in a rural community. Now, after a year of working as a local agency director in the small town in Arizona, I moved to Phoenix, Arizona to work for the State of Arizona WIC program. This is where I worked as a state-level nutritionist. And from there, I moved to the Maryland WIC program where I worked as a state-level nutritionist but at their training center and at their training center I helped train the new hires that came into the WIC program across the state. I currently work for the national nonprofit education arm and advocacy voice of the WIC program. So one reason for my continued upward mobility within the WIC program is because when I was working at the local agency level I sometimes wondered why the policies that were being passed down to my clinic from the state office didn't always make my life easier and in fact they sometimes presented challenges. Some of them didn't even always seem to make sense. So I thought that if I moved to the state office, then I'd have more influence on WIC policy, which in some respects I did, but it was also at the state level where I learned that a lot of these policies are being pushed down from the USDA regional offices. If you want to learn what the specific seven USDA regions are, then please click on my previous video where I talk about the various levels of the WIC program. So after working at two different state offices, I realized that if I really wanted to have more say in the policy of the WIC program, I'd have to move up one more layer. Now it's at my current organization that I finally realized that Congress is the governing body that had the ultimate say over the policy of the WIC program. With that being said, USDA has the federal authority to write, implement, and enforce the program policy of WIC, but it's Congress who authorizes programmatic changes in the first place. This is how I stumbled into the world of advocacy and lobbying. I'm not a registered lobbyist, but in my organization, we have lobbyists who meet with legislators and their staffers on behalf of the WIC community. And it's actually through advocacy and lobbying that the WIC food package first got updated. That's correct, the push for updating the WIC food package was a decade-long transformational process that resulted in the strongest nutrition guidelines among any federal program. So now back to the WIC food package. Foods in the WIC food package include whole grains, such as whole wheat bread, tortillas, and rice, cereal, eggs, milk, cheese, peanut butter, canned fish, beans, fruit juice, fresh, canned, and frozen fruits and vegetables, infant formula, and infant cereals and baby foods. Now, I may have jumped the gun a little bit when I talked about how the WIC food package first got updated through advocacy and lobbying, 
but then I didn't really explain what that food package review process was. So in earlier videos, I stated how the WIC food package between 1974 and 2009 didn't have any updates done to it. So it wasn't until 2009 that the WIC food package first got updated since the program's inception. One thing many people may not realize is that in 2010, the Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act codified the process requiring USDA to conduct a scientific review of the WIC food package at least every 10 years. Central to the review is that recommendations are grounded in the most recently available science. Based on the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine's Expert Committee review and subsequent recommendations, the USDA's Food and Nutrition Service considers policy options that result in federal regulation. These regulations specify the types and minimum nutritional requirements of foods to be included in the WIC food package. States are provided a certain level of flexibility on how they implement these regulations. So let's dive deeper into the WIC food package review process. Both in 2005 and 2017, NASM was commissioned by USDA's FNS to conduct a review of the most recently available science. NASM's 2005 report resulted in those 2009 food package changes that I've mentioned earlier. The 2009 food package changes better aligned the foods provided so that the package was consistent with the dietary guidelines for Americans and established dietary recommendations for infants and children over two years of age. One of the most significant changes in 2009 was the inclusion of the cash value voucher, abbreviated CVV, which allowed participants to purchase fresh, frozen, and canned fruits and vegetables. Following the food package changes in 2009, studies have shown improved access to healthy foods such as whole grains, fruits, vegetables, and lower fat milk for WIC participants. Increased breastfeeding initiation among WIC mothers, increased consumption of fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and low-fat, non-fat milk by young children, and lower rates of overweight and obesity, and improved participant consumption of whole grains, decreased consumption of whole milk among caregivers and children who usually consumed it, and increased consumption of fruits and vegetables. Since the implementation of these 2009 food package changes, studies have also found improved inventory of healthier foods in WIC and non-WIC authorized stores. Therefore, the WIC food package helps improve access to healthy food within communities at large, even for individuals who do not participate in the WIC program. Now I'm gonna turn my attention to NASM's 2017 report. NASM's most recent review of the WIC food package was completed and published in a 900 plus page report on January 5th, 2017. Since then, the report has been with the USDA, and USDA enacts changes to the WIC food package through a formal rulemaking process. So let me provide a high-level overview of the food package review process and what we can expect to take place moving forward. Step one involves NASM reviewing the food package and then providing its recommendations in a report to USDA's FNS. USDA then reviews the recommendations and publishes an interim rule and accepts public comments. Step three involves USDA responding to all public comments and then making any changes to the food package rule considering the aforementioned comments. For step four, USDA publishes an interim final rule and accepts public comments. For step five, USDA responds to all public comments and makes any changes to the food package rule considering these comments. And then step six is USDA's publication of a final rule. So what specific recommendations were made in NASM's 2017 report that the WIC community can look forward to. I'm going to provide a high-level summary, but if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment box below. I'm also going to include a link to chapter six of the report, which you can read if you want to learn more about the specific recommendations. Recommendation 6.1 states that USDA's FNS should increase the dollar amount of the cash value voucher, add fish, and reduce the amounts of juice, milk, legumes, and peanut butter in all food packages for women and children to improve the balance of food groups in alignment with the 2015 through 2020 Dietary Guidelines for Americans. Recommendation 6.2 states that USDA's FNS should support the cultural food preferences and special dietary needs of WIC participants by requiring states to offer additional options for the WIC food categories, including substitution of a CVV in place of juice, additional forms and varieties of vegetables and fruits, both canned and dried legumes, and a range of options and sizes for grains and yogurts. Recommendation 6.3 states that USDA's FNS, as a means of supporting breastfeeding of any duration and intensity, should allow individual tailoring of the infant food packages to best meet the needs of the mother-infant diet. And recommendation 6.4 states that USDA's FNS should reduce the amounts of infant cereal across infant food packages and reduce the amount of jarred infant fruits and vegetables and jarred infant meats provided in the food packages for fully breastfeeding infants. 
caregivers should be permitted to substitute all or part of the jarred infant fruits and vegetables with a CVV and a portion of jarred infant meat with canned fish. I do want to say that there are three additional recommendations that I've left out of this video because they are very WIC specific in terms of jargon and I want to be cognizant of my viewers who aren't from the WIC community. But just be aware that there are three other recommendations and if you're curious to read more about them then you can click on the link that I've provided in the description box. So I want to close out today's episode by discussing three commonly asked questions I've received from both WIC participants and staff alike just to demonstrate the nutrition rationale for the inclusion and exclusion of certain foods in the WIC food package. Possibly the most commonly asked question I receive is why is juice allowed in the WIC food package? It's high in sugar and overconsumption of fruit juices contributes to obesity so why even included within the WIC food package in the first place? If you recall in my last video I highlighted how iron deficiency anemia was a major concern when WIC was first created. A nutrient that helps the body absorb iron is vitamin C which is provided in juice. And remember, fresh fruits and vegetables were not included in the WIC food package until 2009. From 1974 until 2009, the WIC food package remained the same. Therefore, the addition of fresh fruits and vegetables to the WIC food package is fairly new relative to the history of the WIC program. These changes would not have happened if not for the decade of advocacy and lobbying taken on by organizations such as the National WIC Association. Another commonly asked question I receive is why is soy beverage allowed as a substitute for cow's milk, but other plant beverages such as oat milk and almond milk are not allowed? Federal regulations stipulate the nutrient content of soy beverage to ensure it's meeting the nutritional needs of WIC participants. So when I was working for the Maryland WIC program, I was one of the state level nutritionists reviewing all the submissions for the soy beverage category within the WIC food package. Another thing that many people may not know is that state level nutritionists are responsible for reading the nutrition label as well as ensuring that the products that are included in the WIC food package meet the federal regulations. And that's how it works for soy beverage. With that being said, plant milk alternatives such as oat milk and almond milk currently do not meet such nutrient requirements outlined in the federal regulation and therefore they're not allowed in the WIC food package. Another commonly asked question is why can't I buy organic foods in WIC? Federal regulations do not actually exclude the allowance of organic foods in WIC. However, states may choose not to authorize organic options in the WIC food package due to concerns regarding cost containment. Organic foods cost more than non-organic foods, and states therefore prefer to authorize non-organic options due to budgetary concerns. Thank you for joining me today. If you like what you see, please smash the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And remember, you are your own best advocate. Feed your body well, nourish your soul, nurture your mind, and nutrify your spirit. Remain true to yourself and never forget that every second forward is another opportunity to be a better version of your past self.